I am, however, concerned by increasing restrictions on the civic space with human rights defenders, journalists and perceived critics targeted, as well as by hate speech and discrimination against minorities, especially Muslims. It is particularly important in a pre-electoral context to ensure an open space that respects the meaningful participation of everyone. His concerns in this regard are unwarranted and do not reflect the reality of the largest democracy in the world. It is imperative that those in positions of authority do not allow their judgment to be clouded by propaganda. In India, with an electorate of 960 million people, the coming election will be unique in scale. I appreciate the country's secular and democratic traditions and its great diversity. I am, however, concerned by increasing restrictions on the civic space with human rights defenders, journalists and perceived critics targeted as well as by hate speech and discrimination against minorities, especially Muslims. It is particularly important in a pre-electoral context to ensure an open space that respects the meaningful participation of everyone. I welcome the Supreme Court's decision last month on campaign finance schemes upholding the right to information and transparency. President, we thank the High Commissioner for his global update. We have noted his comments about our forthcoming general elections. However, his concerns in this regard are unwarranted and do not reflect the reality of the largest democracy in the world. In any democracy, argumentation is natural. It is imperative that those in positions of authority do not allow their judgment to be clouded by propaganda. Plurality, diversity and inclusivity and openness are at the core of our democratic polity and our constitutional values. These are backed by fiercely independent institutions, including a robust judiciary that aim to protect the rights of all. Our electoral process has been characterized by a high degree of people's participation and full faith in the electoral mandate by all. In fact, we are privileged that many across the world seek to learn from our experience and aspire to emulate it. We have no doubt that as in numerous occasions in the past, the Indian people will freely exercise their vote to choose a government that they believe can best give voice and flight to their aspirations. Mr. President, India as home to one-sixth of humanity has led from the front with an enduring dedication to promotion and protection of human rights for all. In this endeavor, our approach has been guided by our civilizational ethos that views the world as one family. More recently, this commitment was manifest in our response to the pandemic by providing assistance to our friends and partners across the world, our disaster relief efforts, and support during crises in various countries. Our development initiatives across the world and our G20 presidency last year where we voiced particularly the concerns of the Global South. It is in this spirit that we welcome the renewed focus on issues affecting us all, such as reform of the multilateral governance structures, including international financial architecture, enhancing technical assistance and capacity building, sustainable development and the need for peace. Mr. President, today when the world is riddled with conflicts and war, India has been a voice of reason consistently calling for dialogue and diplomacy. It is only when peace is given a chance that the most vulnerable can hope for a better future where their basic needs are met and their human rights are protected.